mean, if you've been around my channel a bit, you know that I'm a huge Garmin fan. I run with a Garmin watch. I wear it every day. I run with a Garmin heart rate monitor. I even have the Garmin S2 index scale, which I've owned for over a year now. In this video, we'll go over what information the Garmin scale provides for you, if it delivers on the value proposition that Garmin promises, why I decided to pay top dollar for a Garmin scale, and whether you should too. Hey, I'm Dave. I used to own and run gyms for well over a decade until I decided to leave the fitness industry as a profession, but I always kept it as a passion. So now I cover all sorts of fitness related content on my YouTube channel. I go over training programs, exercise techniques, and occasionally some exercise gadgets as well. If you're into that sort of thing, please consider dropping a sub. Today we talk Garmin S2 index scale and whether it's worth your attention and money. Let's jump in. So let's start with the question, what makes any scale good? I would say being accurate and being consistent. So does Garmin deliver on that with the Garmin S2 index scale? That's an easy yes. As far as weight goes, the scale is both accurate and consistent. Like any other platform scale, you do need to be on even and firm ground when you weigh yourself. But this isn't just a scale, it's a smart scale. So this will tell you your weight, your body fat percentage, your BMI, your bone mass, your muscle mass, your water weight, and for some reason, also the weather. It can also enter your statistics directly into your Garmin Connect app and can do all that for up to 16 profiles. So if you happen to live in a rather large family and everyone has Garmin watches, then well, whatever, it doesn't matter. So let's be more specific with our questions. What makes a smart scale good? So if we say accuracy and consistency, that goes for not only weight now, but also we have to include at least body comp measurements and the ability to log those metrics into some sort of app or digital platform. So for body comp reading, smart scales and so many other smaller body comp devices use bioelectrical impedance to estimate your body fat percentage. This means that they send a small electrical current through your body through two points of contact, in this case, your feet, and based on the amount of time it takes to complete the circuit, it will estimate your body fat percentage. This is because body fat causes greater resistance or impedance than lean mass and slows the rate at which the current travels. So lean tissue is more than 70% water and conducts electricity well, while fatty tissue is low in water and doesn't conduct well. Now the Achilles heel of this type of system is that overall your body's around 60% water. So if you're very hydrated or very dehydrated, it would have an effect on accuracy. Generally speaking, a good bioelectrical impedance based measuring device is accurate within around 5%, which is a pretty big variance. But if it's good quality and is used in a consistent manner, then it can still be used to measure progress. So does Garmin deliver on accuracy of smart scale features and specifically body comp readings? Yes, as far as any other bioelectrical impedance monitor would, but the cool thing is it doesn't have to be super accurate because you can actually adjust the measurements. So if you could use a more accurate form of measurement, like getting a seven point caliper reading from a pro, or an extremely accurate option is a bod pod measurement, you can enter that into your Garmin Connect as your new anchor point, and then the scale will use that information going forward to make future measurements based off the information from the new anchor point. That's, I think, a pretty cool way to work around the shortcomings of this measurement method. So does Garmin deliver on consistency? Yes, in my experience it does, as long as you're consistent with when and how you measure yourself. Are you measuring yourself at the same time of day? And more specifically, have you eaten? Have you used a bathroom? Have you hydrated recently? Since we're measuring through bioelectrical impedance, all those things do matter. But if you're consistent with the way you approach your measurements, then you can expect consistent readings. 
So that gives it two thumbs up with a few small caveats in both accuracy and consistency. Now one smaller consideration on this scale would be the looks of it. You can't ignore it, it's gonna be in your house, you're gonna see it all the time, it looks better than some other options out there. That's a thumbs up as well. Another small note is that the battery life is pretty good on this thing. It runs on four AAA batteries and I weigh myself at least a few times per week and I've had this scale for about a year and a half. I just had to replace the original batteries it came with a couple days back, which coincidentally also gave me the idea to do this video. So one of the key factors that play any role in purchasing decision is value you're getting. So one unique value that the index scale offers is its direct connection to the Garmin ecosystem. We pay for all types of conveniences all the time every day in our lives. So if you're deep into the Garmin ecosystem, then maybe this level of convenience is valuable to you. Now, you're definitely paying a premium to get a Garmin S2 index scale, which is currently retailing at $150, but it can sometimes be available at a discount through health insurance programs or different assorted sales. I've seen as low as $120 brand new. There's a premium segment to the smart scale market where companies like Withings or InBody are competing at the $100 to $200 price point. But there are also quite a few available under $100 and some even available for under $50. So with those types of options available, you have to ask, is the scale right for you? Now, the scale makes no sense unless you're a Garmin user. So that's my assumption that you are a Garmin user. And it seems that many Garmin users are primarily focused on performance as the metric they want to manage competitive runners, triathletes, cyclists, or whatever else. So if you spend heaps of hours exercising, focusing purely on performance, and you don't really put that much value into your weight or body comp, then clearly this doesn't have enough value for you. Save your money, spend it elsewhere. But if you're like me, you have a full-time job and a full-time life, and need to pay attention to things like your weight and body comp as markers of your overall fitness and whether you're ready for pool season, and this starts to make a bit more sense. Now, I'm a data nerd that likes to focus on fitness and is in the Garmin ecosystem, so for me the scale was a buy. But I did agonize a bit for spending so much money on a scale, but ultimately I used a discount program through my health insurance. I got it for 120. I have no regrets. I definitely do appreciate the aesthetic of the scale as well, and that it does deliver on the promise of both accuracy and consistency. If you value those same things, then I can recommend the Garmin Index S2 scale. Like most other Garmin products, there is a comparably steep initial investment, but it's still an overall solid purchase. Now, I hope this information was helpful to you if you're considering a Garmin Index scale, and if you made it to the end of the video, then you're awesome, and thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day, and if you'd support the channel with a like or subscribe, it would really help me and let YouTube know to show the video to others as well, so thank you for your support. Now if you want to see the type of workout program you could do so you can hop on your fancy new Garmin scale and keep seeing your weight and body fat percent drop, then check out this video I made where I review a hybrid training program that I designed, packed full of running workouts, lifting workouts, and progressions built in as well. On the other hand, if you want to keep shopping for Garmin gear, then check out my review of the Epix Gen 2, which is the watch I use every day to help me with my training. I'm Dave, and this is Dave Does Fitness. Have an awesome day, and stay fit.